Airbase is Perch, and we're joined by a special guest, Sean. How are you doing? Hey, thanks, guys. I really appreciate uh, you're doing me a favor here. I know you thanked me, Perch, but uh, I need the traction. Uh, I don't know if you heard about the strange rollout of my book, but uh, it's good to <laughs> for me to finally take take some action and get out in front of it, try to get my numbers back up. Comic shops are saying it's doing incredible because it's selling out everywhere. So that's great news, right? No, I, I mean, whenever you sell out, I feel like we left money on the table. They're thinking about reprinting issue one, but they're thinking about combining issue one and two to reprint. I don't know. I, I asked them, like, is there precedence for doing this? This sounds kind of weird. Um, so I feel like we're going to get a reverse hockey stick here. And uh, I, I feel like I would have had a top 10 book if the rollout hadn't been botched. But uh, we're doing the best we can right now to get our numbers back up. And unfortunately, Perch, we're doing one in 25 variants for all of them. Yeah. I'm normally not a variant guy, but um, this is the game the industry is playing and my uh, boss has pushed back on me. So what are you going to do? You know, I would even put some like uh, some Japanese writing uh, cover dress on it just to make it look like, oh, this clearly isn't a DC book. This is this is obviously manga. Let's just put it over there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You could have at one point just one of the characters just super horny. Yeah. Change some of the dialogue. It'll fit. It'll be perfect. Like that uh, Dick Island. That is the, the gayest comic I've ever seen. <laughs> you you yeah. can't get mad at it. I mean, it is like LGBT uh, friendly. So, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. all right. Well, um, <laughs> I want to ask you about um, a White Knight. So, obviously, the biggest news of all of White Knight uh, is that uh, Terry McGinnis is half Asian. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Oh, shit, he's white. Uh, that, that makes sense. But I'm like, why didn't they make him Asian? Like, there's so many white people, white men in Batman's life anyway. Um, so for this, I thought, well, let's make him half Asian for sure. Let's finally, like, plant the flag and just get that done. I have a lot of conservative readers who like that he's half Asian, too, and they were confused as well, you know? You know, because at age 14, they were racist like me. <laughs> but a few people on Twitter were just saying this is another woke trash book. I, I, I did. So I have an African-American Robin. There's too many white people. It's about time we had a black person. Let's just fucking make him black. So yeah. I finally got that in there. And I, I had some dialogue where the first time he appears, he says, about time we had a black Robin. So I decided yeah. not to uh, play really? with that. Yeah, just I feel like maybe three years ago, I would have added that just as like a little haha, finally, you know, but now I, I don't want to trigger people. I just want them to read the book. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take a picture, put it online tweet it and say, Hey, first black Robin, everybody that day, you know, Dan DiDio gets up. He's probably planning on a really relaxing day at work and he gets in and his phone's <laughs> going <laughs> off the hook and he's getting calls from like USA today and time magazine asking about African-American Robin. I get a call from uh, Larry who is uh, the talent manager of sorts. And um, normally Larry calls me when I say something stupid online. Um, so I bring ring. Hey, what's going on, Larry? Hey, Sean, how you doing? I'm like, Larry, are you calling about Black Robin? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> well, you know, we really, at DC, really love to push diversity and blah, 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 blah. Um, but, you know, it did catch us a little off guard and we're just wondering the best way to move forward. So uh, I was like, Larry, it's just ridiculous. Uh, it's taking this long to get a Black Robin. And I'm saying like Black Robin this, Black Robin that. And he's like, let me stop you right there. Stop calling him Black Robin. Call him African American Robin. And I'm like, I invented him. You don't get to tell me what to call him. <laughs> so I got off the phone. And I'm like, Yay! I did my um, my good deed for Black people. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> and literally white knighting them, I guess. You know, when when the Joker leans in to talk to Bruce, he purposely leans in too close. Uh, he like boop him on the nose every now and then, and it's just stuff that drives Bruce up the wall. But um, I feel like the people that are uh, uh, shipping, they, you know, a lot of fanfic deals with Joker and Jack and uh, Bruce Wayne and Harley and all that stuff. I feel like people that are into gay romance with Bruce and Joker are going to have a lot to uh, to play with here. <laughs> so uh, I had the the orders. Something ha went wrong with uh, the rollout of Beyond. Either the shops didn't get the message. Um, someone at DC dropped the ball. We're not really sure what happened. I had a meeting with comic shops. And I asked them what we could do better next time. Did they not understand what this was? Why did they under order? What did I do wrong? Did, and they, they said, well, we didn't get a poster this time. And I thought, oh, why didn't we include a goddamn fucking poster <laughs> like we did the last <laughs> two times? Just hanging a poster on the wall as people walk in might have fixed this entire problem. And when I looked at my numbers, they were about half what they should be. Um, and there's my wife's book did better than mine. No offense to my wife, but fuck her. She shouldn't be doing better than me. <laughs> 
if I'm 40,000 units light, what's that? $200,000, quarter million dollars? A quarter million dollars, yeah. Quarter million dollars. Okay. Um, if you had just given my two editors who left more money to stay, maybe they knew to include a poster. Maybe they would have said, oh, shit, we should move the Tom King thing back a few days. Oh, let's try to uh, delay one of these other Beyond books so that Sean can have the runway. You just lost a quarter million dollars. That is at least three salaries of people. That is at least five underplay- underpaid employees <laughs> that, you, yeah. that you could have had. <laughs> like, there's direct consequences for what's happening right now. You get that, don't you? Yeah, you know, I love drawing Batman, and I make a lot of money doing it. But um, I'm hitting my breaking point here. <laughs> you know, like yeah. five years ago, it was really fun being at DC because you had office parties every year. You had, uh, you know, the 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 New York party and the the brewery and the base of the Empire State Building, and mm-hmm. you know, bonuses, Lots of key swapping, and, other things, going yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see where DC ends up in the next six months. I hope they fix a lot of these problems because if they don't, then I might I might retire from um from mainstream comic i think the people that are successful right now are are able to get lost in the work and we're we're in it we deal in escapism we're paid to be in escapism so, yeah like the what keeps me going is definitely is like meeting readers getting positive feedback um got a lot of really great compliments from scott snyder which the other day which was nice because i didn't even know nice. if he really read my stuff and like when nice. i struck out to do my own writing like very, very few writers ever wrote and said congratulations. Mostly, I think they saw me as a threat or they were annoyed that I took myself off the table as far as being available to draw their shit. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it became very isolating um, when White Knight became a hit. Um, um, yeah, man, no- I mean, it's tough. Anyone, if you mention CG in any casual way and don't, you know, castrate them then that's how people are going to read it unfortunately i don't care about that i don't play those games joe doesn't obviously but i know a lot of people they sort of need those games i just need to do a super cut of all the times uh people in cg have called me a cuck and then i can just i can just send that video out to people see yeah yeah that it all works but uh, you got you got uh ron mars i was glad ron came on uh, i love talking to ron no, you had the other guy, the super right winger, the colorist. I forget his name. Abe. Um, yeah. Yeah. Abe you did all on. the talking. I did not get a word in. Yeah. <laughs> That's you got, true. You got a good swath of, of people. Like, I think you're trying to be fair and balanced as much as you can be. We know that Twitter doesn't matter, but we also fucking love getting on there and dunking on people. Like, we, we, we're very two minded about it. It's, it's amazing the compartmentalization that we have. Like, if Einstein was on Twitter, I'm sure we would find reasons not to like him either. <laughs> You're going to be selling the original art, I'm assuming, off this? Yeah, I actually sold uh, issue three complete already. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. Honestly, I make more money on original art than I do on Batman, um, than, than on royalties. Uh, in theory, I should, even if DC totally sinks, I should still be making Batman books for free just because I can sell the artwork. How much are they going to have to shell out, roughly? Uh, on average, my pages go for about 3000 bucks. A page? Uh, my covers, yep. My covers, a splashy page. Uh, would be you know five to six grand a cover is the minimum 12 now i've had people offer 20 grand for issue one covers and i've turned it down there's a a dubai prince uh that's some royal middle eastern family i don't think these guys care about um kirby but they'll go they'll tell their assistants just buy all these kirby pages whoever the hot artist was in the 60s iron man first appearance whatever and they'll just sit on it um, they don't yep. give a shit about comics. It's just an investment and it's a way to wash money. Um, yep. I have a few, few guys who I think are in the mob who buy from me and it's only cash and it's just a way for them to uh, launder. <laughs> so <laughs> when you start nice. selling for a high, when you get really up there, you start meeting some of these whales who can afford these pages. And it's really interesting to see what, what, what walks through the door. One of the things I forgot to mention, um, is that comics seem to have fallen into this habit of, if they think you're successful, they think they don't need to market you anymore. Yeah. This, yeah, this happened broken. to uh, some big friends of mine too, who uh, the publishers they were working for were like, well, we knew you were a big name, so we didn't think we had to do anything. And it's like, thanks for the confidence, assholes. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, we all still need some marketing. Huh. I don't know why comics convince themselves that uh, they don't need to do marketing on big names anymore. Like, How did that idea work itself into the culture? The, the other part is a, a, a publisher can basically set up shop, bring in all of their friends, and then it effectively blocks out people from entering that publishers. 
how long do you think Marvel will have offices in Manhattan? Yeah. That office is horrible. I remember going, uh, there isn't even like a proper reception room. You have a desk jammed near the elevator door and that's where you wait before you're ushered in. And three big editors to a, room, a 10 by 10 room, like it is inhumane working in the in Marvel offices. <laughs> a place where Kirby once wanted to punch somebody out and it's like, yeah. yeah. You, you really wanted to be there and then you go there and like, wow, this place is a dump. Yeah. It's not inspiring. And I feel no wonder, even if it's hard for these people to be putting out their best work, if they're being paid poorly and forced to share each other's farts in a 15 by 15 room with no windows, some of them aren't good at their jobs, period, but maybe give them a better chance by giving them more resources. Now they have no excuses because they have a lot of excuses why, not just Marvel, by the way, a lot of publishers, you have a lot of excuses why things aren't great but if you fix all those things you go all right idiots like we fixed all the problems so go ahead and make a comic and uh if you fuck it up well guess whose fault it is now <laughs> you know and yeah. i think we'll be proven right in a lot of ways like yep yeah 80 percent of these people really did, did do a bad job and there's just no one to blame mm-hmm. anymore because we fixed everything we reached the peak of this in some way when I, when I saw the trailer for the new thor movie normally a movie a trailer has some plot in it you know you know the bad guy is you know what the stakes are the trailer I saw was just Thor partying, listening to Guns N' Roses and doing cool shit with it. It was like, they're not even trying to make a decent trailer anymore. They're just like, you guys, you know, you're going to love this. It's going to be a fun movie. So we know you're going to show up. So here you go. <laughs> and they're probably right. If comics was fixed 20%, it would be fixed enough for us to fix the rest of it ourselves. 100%. Like like maybe yeah. the reason we're not able to fix this is because we're just so broken. We've crossed below a line that we're really struggling here. And if we just had a bit more bandage and just helped a little bit more, we'd be able to get do the rest of ourselves. Next question. There's um, this theory going around right now. The writers have writers who are over 40, who are writers in like from the eighties to the nineties. Um, there's no way to describe this without getting into the culture war shit and mm-hmm. comics gates about to love what I'm about to say. But there are a lot of old school, so-called old school writers who feel like they've been pushed out of the industry, who say they know what they're doing. And I think that they do. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at the new uh, group of so-called woke writers who are being um, hired for whatever reasons. And they're looking at this as a mess. And a lot of these old school writers are just waiting to take the stage back, like, some young asshole grabbed the microphone and is singing and screaming and the crowd seems to be into it, but really the sales are going down. So there's this phenomenon with a lot of writers who uh, are sort of waiting this out and they're excited for when um, publishers realize that these new guys and girls aren't all they're cracked up to be. They can be pushed out, (laughs) pushed off the stage, and then these old school writers can reclaim. What it comes down to is a lot of the new people uh, were hired because they're buddies of the young editors who want to work with their friends. Yeah. And so you get a very nepotism like sequence. And, yeah. and frankly, the younger editors are getting paid junk money are hiring people who they like working with, but nobody's really out for success because they've never seen what success looks like. They're, they're mm-hmm. They don't know what it means to make six figures, seven figures on a book because that they have no context for that. So they're just, happy to kind of work with their friends and there's almost again this fatalistic behavior like well, one day all this will come crashing down but at least me and my friends had a good time along the way right hey we should hire those old guys again they knew what they were doing i i don't know that that's moments ever going to occur because that would require people going ah we fucked up and that's yeah. hard for people to do well, i didn't realize that when you buy a company you're buying a lot of debt reasonably how many cheap companies are available for purchase at a reasonable level and if you do uh, buy them, like it seems to me, a lot of the things we talk about in this podcast is a lot of people in the industry, a lot of employees don't really know what they're doing. So if you're buying a, a company with 10 people, get ready for five of them to suck at their jobs. You know, yeah. so you got five firings immediately. <laughs> if I had to buy a company, I might have tried to look into buying um, Valiant. I would have looked into buying Valiant yeah. at one point because I liked a lot of their IPs in the 90s. I think that stuff could yeah. be reinvented and. I've met the Valiant uh, fan base, and they're small but passionate. Um, now, in the last four years, a lot of them have been really pissed off at Valiant for different reasons. Um, 
but you, we've all talked about and editors who are involved. Yeah. But I think there's a way to get that back. So that was a company that I would be interested in looking at. I have no yeah. idea what their debt is, though. But Probably a reasonable amount of debt. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you know, Purge? I don't know. Just just spitballing here. I mean, you're yeah. not hiring Heather Antos. She's she's not out of there. She's not there anymore, is she? No, she's over at IDW. No, she's she's at a, she's over at IDW. And, how, many, um, how many editors is IDW? How many employees does IDW have? No, they have they have a decent 50. amount. You know, they have more editors than titles. Yeah. It seems. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, I didn't know what block bots were mm-hmm. until I tried to follow her on Twitter, and I was hit with like, "You're blocked." And I'm like, "What?" And I was one of the first people of all my friends who knew what, there was this new technology. And I'm like, yeah. if you can have a list, like anybody who follows someone you don't like, uh, that there, there's this thing that you can do now. And I called six people. I'm like, what did I ever do to Heather Antos? Why does she, why is she blocking me? And I guess I was just following someone that, that, that she didn't like. Yeah. Are you on the right side of history or not? I mean, I, I created black Robin, so I've done mm. my piece. You're welcome. Black people. While we're throwing people under the bus, uh, can I finally tell you my side of the whole Mags fiasco where she accused me of love bombing? <laughs> it's it's your party. <laughs> she she says she has a lot of mental stuff going on, so I hope that she gets help for all that stuff, if that stuff's true. Cool. Um, I really just tried to be your friend because Scott Snyder, she was a student of his, and any friends of Scott's a friend of mine. And I don't like living in an industry where people who... Uh, are LGBT and different, doing different things just get attacked. Uh, and I'm like, well, if I'm, you know, someone in power and I can hang out and try to, you know, be emotionally supportive and blah, 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 then yeah, let's do it. Um, and, uh, you know, I got to the point where I like, she didn't have money. So I offered to like g- give her a, a loan to pay for uh, her wedding. Uh, mm-hmm. She was complaining that she didn't That's have enough good. for a, uh, uh, surgery to do more stuff the and i said well I, I can give you some money for that and i wasn't like buying her uh loyalty or anything like that in fact um i told her like if any of your friends don't like me and it puts you in a weird spot like do not defend me do not defend me on twitter do not defend me to your friends like i don't want to make anything hard for you so like the I, whole idea you on that. I, I guess and like it came up out of the blue i'm like what the fuck happened I, I literally texted you two weeks ago and things were fine like if you had a problem why couldn't you just and you know i talked to my wife i talked to my lawyer and it was just like stay back like there's nothing you can do now she's she's uh shots fired and uh looking back i it's it's nice to know that it didn't work and that in fact it was sort of a um one of the m- major attacks that happened in comics where everyone on the left and right was like, no, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> like suddenly everyone was sane that day. And we're like, uh, Sean's been doing this for 17 years. If you're accusing him of this, then there would be other accusations and there's nothing. He doesn't even go to shows. I mean, he does, he brings his wife. It's like, no, even people that don't like me were like, I wish we had something on Sean, but this is not it. <laughs> so keep fishing. I'm, I'm glad there was a moment of sanity there. Although, you know, at one point when you put your hand on my thigh, I was wondering. Well, you were yeah. asking for it. So I was taking a play of the Warren Ellis book. I thought I would try it out. You know, even fucking Bleeding Cool did a piece about why you shouldn't have to pay $30 on eBay to buy this book. This book is plentiful everywhere and this is just bullshit. And I'm like, thanks, Rich. Like, what do you fucking have against me? What are you trying to do? What's the point of this article? I'll tell you exactly what he has against you. Because <laughs> I won't do an interview and I... That. yeah yeah what well, does he have against me and seriously i'm asking what does he have against me whenever they cover anything that's related to me they bring up some uh drama with links to everything and when mm-hmm. they bring up any one of the people who are more woke and stepping in line or whatever that's like you don't click on any of their you don't have any links for their bullshit how does anyone think this is helpful to you even out of self-interest mm-hmm. you're a comic book news site you survive on comic books being out, so there is news. Yeah, you're killing yourself, you dumbass. Oh. Yeah, I want Bleeding Cool just to never ever fucking talk about me ever again, man. I tell you, it's the CG thing. It is, it is easy to have an opinion and be very black and white when you have a hundred followers and your favorite thing to do is be on Twitter and dunk on people. 
the best I can do is just be kind to try to sell them something, win them over. And like, I'll try to be their favorite liberal ever. One guy didn't even really know what it was. And he had a, a daughter who was a uh, adopted Asian daughter who was bisexual. And I'm like, you're CG. And I'm like, Hey, that's fantastic. <laughs> Everyone who's CG is as woke as you. That's fucking great. Uh, and I said, well, I don't want to get into it now, but I'm sure there's some people in CG who you wouldn't want your daughter to hang out with. So, you know, I just left it at yeah. that. Um, I did a, uh, an event where for my Kickstarter where um, people could pay $500 to hang out with me. Um, and I didn't think anyone was going to buy them. And they did. The deal was that, you know, I would buy everybody dinner. Um, I'd buy drinks and show them around my studio and um, they'd come to Maine and they would be responsible for their own flight and hotel. But so I, you know, I've had dinner with like 15 people and the guy that sits down next to me is definitely CG. And uh, he was cool about it. He, he was just talking about how he loves Joe Rogan. And I listen to Joe Rogan too. So I'm like, that's, that's fine. And I have a lot of conservative friends. So like, I know how to handle, it's not even anything to handle. I think most people listening to this are somewhere in the middle. We all have mm-hmm. friends at work who don't agree with us. And we're able to maneuver these waters very easily. Um, and chatting with him, like he did get to a point where he had too much to drink. And he started to get a little weird. And all my other guests saw it. And they were immediately like, getting this guy into a cab and getting him out of there. So I had other people like swoop in and it's not because he's CG. Yeah. It's just because he had too much to drink and he was yeah. kind of a weirdo on top of that. Um, other, otherwise yeah. a nice guy. And I, but it's hard not to talk about it because Twitter is where the conversation is. If we're not in a shop or a show together, it's like, where are we all? Where's, where, where's the hangout? And the hangout is on Twitter. And it's like, oh man, I mean, the amount of brain power I spend, the amount of calories I burn thinking about the LGBT stuff and, and people who've got it wrong and right. How do I maneuver it as a straight white dude? And should I have a gay character? Like, it's insane. I feel like such a fool for wasting so much time with this bullshit that doesn't matter. Like, so African-American Robin, uh, would I have him putting on the suit? Do I make a comment or do I not? Um, if you're on Twitter, you make a comment and you lead with it and you make it a cover and you interview with it, tweet about it and get everyone to back you. And, you know, that's the way I think you would, if you're going to go that way, that's how you'd handle it. And uh, if you're not on Twitter, you wouldn't know to do any of that stuff. I would just, you know, talk to a, a black friend of mine and ask him like, does this work for you? Is this anything? Am I missing anything here? Am I going to get attacked for whatever in star Trek when they're worried about technology on other planets, fucking up civilizations that aren't ready for it. I think Twitter was created by aliens just as a silent, like bomb to destroy like stage one to blow ourselves up. (laughs) It's just Twitter hatred. You know, we're clearly not ready for this or wired for it. You know, the one last thing I'll say, and I got to get out of here is um, there is a, so we have lists in, uh, that go around of people we should block, people you need to be careful of, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I know you guys have both seen lists. Yeah, I'm on most of those lists. Yeah, I'm starting to see a list of people who are going to burn out. Like people who have been in comics for a while created their own list. They're like, oh, we see you, new writer, new artist. We see your behavior on Twitter. And there's almost no, no one's make, placing bets yet. But I've seen a list of people saying like, how many years do you, until you know Donny Cates? just burns out <laughs> or something happens or mm-hmm. you see some people are really active on Twitter who are really uh, aggro about a lot of this stuff and people who are old timers are sort of sitting back and being like, I predict you to be on this arc. And I think you're about two years in before you're about to be tossed out for some reason. Have you guys seen that list? I, I mean, I've seen conversations along those lines and it's always the okay. same names. This isn't a bunch of like CG people passing around a list of creators. This is actually in the mainstream pros, yeah. pros, um, you know, people probably who would surprise you who are, you know, some of the names I think we've mentioned tonight who have these, this list of people that they think are burnouts that they think are, mm-hmm. you know, I wouldn't get involved in a project with these people. Cause I think they're right about to implode. Yeah. They they're asking. Fucking kill you that pros reach out to you secretly and they don't want to be associated with you, but they certainly want your information and your advice and your not know how to help guide them. You have to keep going forward. Like it's it sucks, but you just have to keep moving forward. You have to show up to work. You have to keep making money. You have to keep selling. It just feels icky sometimes, though. But Sean, thank you for all the time tonight. It's been uh, a pleasure as always. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. See you. Thank you.